Midfield number 10, technical wingers, and skillful defensive midfielders. These are the types of players most commonly used to play certain areas of the field that became well known during the 2010s, after the popularization worldwide of concepts that were already widespread among German coaches like Klopp, when he was still coaching Mainz, and Ralf Rangnick. These areas of the field are the famous half spaces. The half spaces are regions between the side channels and the central channel of the field. In fact, in the famous field division that became associated with Guardiola's style of play, we can see these regions highlighted very well. The half spaces are especially important zones for the attack for several reasons, and it's about some of them that we'll talk about in this video. Firstly, if we imagine that our team is going to play against an opponent with a defensive line of four players, the most common, the region of the half spaces tends to coincide with the space between the center backs and the full backs. These regions can create doubts for the defenders about who should press when an attacker receives the ball here. Usually, this doubt arises within the collective positioning of the attack. Let's give an example. Today, it is very common to see teams forming a line of 5 in the attack, entering into a 3-2-5 or a 2-3-5. These five players up front position themselves, usually aiming to exploit the half spaces. Normally, there's one player open on each side, usually wingers or full backs, one player centralized, usually the center forward, and two players in those intermediate positions, which are the half spaces. Ideally, these players who occupy the half spaces should be players with more refinement, who can play quickly in tight spaces, keeping the ball close to their feet, because this region requires quick movements due to being crowded with markers. Considering that most teams play with lines of four, put yourself in the defender's situation. If the ball goes to one of these players in the half spaces, who should press? We know that whoever presses will leave space behind them, and since we're attacking with a line of five, there will always be a player to take advantage of the space created. It will depend on the attack's ability to generate combinations that quickly get the ball into the created space. That's why it's important that this space be occupied by players with quick thinking and the ability to act fast in tight spaces, with the ball close to their feet. Another important point is that the mere presence of skilled players in the half spaces can lead the marking to try to compress the space to prevent the ball from entering there. As the saying goes, football is a short blanket, and this action of closing the space of these players can open up the sides for the ball to enter to the wingers. Unlike players who play in the half spaces, who need to be able to play short and even turn quickly, in the case of players in the side channels, much more is required in terms of the ability to unbalance in one-on-one -on -one situations. The presence of players in the half spaces gives more freedom and time for these players to receive, control, and go up against the fullback. We can even mention the example of the Brazilian national team in the 2022 World Cup, which was a very positional team and whose one-on-one -on -one skills of the wingers were one of its main weapons. Brazil played in a 4-4-2 and attacked in a 2-3-5, where the full backs aligned with the first defensive midfielder, Casemiro, forming that line of three. The wingers remained open. The central midfielder, Paquetar, entered through the right half space, Neymar slightly open to the left half space, and Rickarlson centralized. The presence of Paquetar on the right and, especially, Neymar on the left, worried the opposing defense a lot which tended to narrow the block to make it difficult for the ball to enter there. This gave more space to Rafinha and Vinicius Jr., who have the characteristic of dueling on the sides. This is a style that relies heavily on individual ability to unbalance. And, in addition to the possibility of unbalancing in one-on-one -on -one situations, there may be the opportunity to create two-on-one -on -one situations against the fullback as well. With the fullback pressing the winger, there's an opening for the player from the half space to attack the full back's back, receive the ball in depth, and make a short cross. This is best exploited if this player from the half space has the corresponding foot, right-footed on the right, for example. To try to neutralize the use of the half space, some teams may set up defensive lines with five players, usually happening with teams that use systems with three center backs. 
When this happens, the defensive system can assign one center back to each half space, covering the entire width of the field with these five players. However, usually these center backs need to have a certain ability to leave the defensive line to anticipate a player moving along the half space, if that's the intention. If this doesn't happen, the half spaces can be used by the attack in more withdrawn regions. A player with very high passing precision could drop a little deeper into this region, positioning diagonally towards the goal, a body position that could be favorable, having passing options on all sides and, if there's an opportunity, make that curved pass, a difficult pass, but difficult to defend, seeking the back of the defensive line. Then having a line of five doesn't help. If you pass one, you pass them all. If you search for some of De Bruyne's plays, for example, you might find some assists of this kind. The opportunity for a midfielder or a defensive midfielder to get a ball like this, with the opportunity to make the pass, could happen due to an overload in the midfield. A defense in a 5-3-2, for example, could demand a lot from its three midfielders to cover the entire width of the field. Some teams that defend in a 5-4-1 don't demand as much aggressiveness from the wingers, requiring more tackling from the two defensive midfielders, who could also be overloaded, and eventually an opportunity like this could arise for the attack. But if the wingers were more aggressive, with this line of four in the midfield covering the space in the midfield, pressing our attack, we would have more difficulty finding opportunities for this type of situation. But the team that was defending would have much less strength in the counterattack to do this, since it would be demanding more from its wingers in the defensive moment. As we mentioned earlier in this video, football is a short blanket. The thing is that it's also very difficult for the attack to have enough tactical repertoire and well-trained to exploit all these possibilities. Well, if you like this video, let's leave here our video about the tactical resource of the square in the midfield and another one recommended by YouTube itself. You can choose which one you prefer to watch now. Well, that's it, big hug and until next time, thanks.